On more than one occasion when I've presented cosmological arguments to a skeptic, they've responded with the claim that all I've done is given an argument, and arguments aren't evidence. Now the first thing we should notice about this claim is at its core, it's an avoidance technique. Rather than face the merits of the argument head on, it just tries to avoid them entirely and brush them off with a simple slogan. Really, there are only two ways to logically respond to an argument. You can attack whether it's valid, meaning does its conclusion logically follow from its premises, or you can attack whether it's sound, meaning you can challenge whether its premises are true. Now, one thing should be immediately clear about the skeptical response. It does neither. So right off the bat, we can see that it isn't really a logical response at all. It's a brush off meant to avoid having to squarely face the argument. But let's take a look at the claim itself to see if it's even true. Is it true that arguments aren't evidence? Well, that depends on what you mean by evidence. Viewed narrowly, we could speak of evidence as physical evidence. When police detectives investigate a crime scene, for example, they look for things like bullet shell casings on the ground, a murder weapon, fingerprints, etc., things like that. These are physical objects that we refer to as evidence. But if that's all this brush off means, that arguments aren't physical objects, well, we can readily concede that. But the next step would be to ask, so what? I mean, is that what the skeptic is really arguing here? Are they really claiming that we can only use physical objects as a basis for knowledge? Well, that's not gonna hold up for a couple of reasons. First, physical objects mean nothing in isolation. It's only when we look at them through an interpretive lens that they start to have meaning. A shell casing sitting on the ground is just that. It's a shell casing on the ground. It starts to take on meaning, though, when we find it in the same location as a body that has bullet holes in it. And if the size of the shell casing matches the size of the bullets that killed the victim. And if we find a murder weapon in the possession of the defendant that matches those bullets and the casing. See, once we start to look at all of these factors together and reason our way through to the best explanation for them, then we come to the conclusion that the defendant is the murderer. In other words, it's only once we fit these physical objects into the larger framework of a logical argument that we start to learn anything meaningful. So physical objects alone tell us nothing. Only when they are interpreted through the lens of logic do we gain knowledge. Second, if we only gain knowledge by observing physical objects, we would never be able to get knowledge of non-physical realities. Let me ask you a question. Is it wrong to torture and murder innocent babies for fun? I would certainly hope everyone would say yes. But what physical object can you point to in order to make that moral judgment? You see, morality is just one area where we claim to have knowledge, but it isn't subject to physical investigation. So if by evidence all the skeptic means is physical evidence, then their slogan doesn't really get them anywhere. In fact, it only shows all the more why arguments are necessary. Viewed more broadly, we could define evidence as anything that gives support to a proposition or claim. Now, under this broader definition, arguments can be seen as evidence. This is especially true when we're talking about non-physical realities like morality. Take the following example. Premise 1. It is immoral to torture innocent babies for fun. Premise 2. Person X wants to go out and torture an innocent baby for fun. Conclusion. What person X wants to do is immoral. Now, there is no physical evidence that helps you conclude that what person X wants to do is wrong. Furthermore, either premise 1 or premise 2, standing in isolation without the other, isn't going to help you reach that conclusion either. It's only when we take both premises together and see what logically follows from them that we can reach the conclusion. So if we ask what is the evidence for our conclusion that what person X wants to do is wrong, we could point to premise 1. We could also point to premise 2. But finally, we could point to the logical argument that brings these two premises together. You see, it's only once all three exist in conjunction that we arrive at our conclusion. Thus, viewed broadly, they're all evidence for that conclusion. So under a narrow definition of evidence, the skeptic only succeeds in showing all the more why arguments are necessary. While under a broad definition of evidence, the skeptic's claim is shown just to be plain false. Either way, the claim that arguments aren't evidence doesn't help them. Next week, we'll start looking at another objection that's commonly raised against cosmological arguments, and the Kalam argument in particular. It has to do with what's called the A and B theories of time. See you next week. God bless.